Cabisto Field at Memorial Stadium in Cole Lawrence, Kansas. It's Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by KFC. Today, the third-ranked Texas Longhorns meet the Kansas Jayhawks. The South Division of the Big 12 Conference still up for grabs as Texas Tech is in the driver's seat undefeated in 08, but Texas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State all remain alive. Meanwhile, in the Big 12 North, Kansas is trying to keep their hopes alive with a win today, but Missouri clinches at least a share of the division title with a win over Iowa State later this afternoon. The Big 12, known as an offensive conference with some of the best quarterback play in the nation, Colt McCoy of Texas on display this afternoon, Austin in Texas native Todd Reesing of Kansas. Dave Black with Dan McLaughlin with you. It is cold, it is windy, and it's senior day here at KU. Welcome to Lawrence, Kansas. When you take a look at UT, certainly they have a chance to get back in that national championship picture. They've got a great quarterback, obviously, in Colt McCoy, and two explosive receivers. They really do, Dan. Quan Cosby has 66 catches. Jordan Shipley has 70. An unbelievable one-two punch that takes the pressure off of each other. And they are good. The fun starts after the catch. They're so good in space with the make you miss. They've each returned a punt and a kickoff for touchdowns in their career as return men as well. Todd Racing has been struggling in his last four games. He's one and three in those four, but in his backfield, picking up the slack a little bit has been Jake Sharp. Well, Sharp has been razor sharp in conference play, Dan, averaging over 108 yards per game in conference. He's got 10 rushing touchdowns on the season, and he can do it inside as well as outside. Ask Kansas State, where he rushed for four touchdowns, a couple of them between the tackles, then he can get on the perimeter and really hurt you with the speed and distort the geometry and the football angles. Also a fine receiver out of the backfield. He is a dual threat at that running back position, and he's back. Ryan Arakpo, nine sacks, 23 pressures, 15 tackles for loss, a disruptive force off the edge. He will be pressuring Todd Reese today. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC. Texas, Kansas. When we return, Michael Eaves and DeMarco Farr in our College Football Saturday studio. Kansas Jayhawks, senior day, and they have won 14 of their last 15 games here at home. The Texas Longhorns on the other side, a 9-1 record with their win last weekend over Baylor. Jim Knox is standing by with head coach Mark Mangino of the Jayhawks. Jim, thank you. The weather, it is cold. The temperature, 37 degrees. The wind chill, though, in the mid-20s. Wind will be a factor, 23 miles per hour here in Lawrence, Kansas. The coin toss, won by Texas. They defer. Kansas will receive to start this game. And the freshman, Justin Tucker, kicks it away. And here we go on College Football Saturday. Out of his own end zone. And breaking out to the outside. And brought down at the 18 was Herford. Lost it as he went down. Let's take a look at the KFC starting lineup for the Kansas Jayhawks and a good one up front in particular when you talk about their senior center, Dave. Yeah, and Adrian Mays done a nice job at left guard. Desmond Briscoe, big time player at the wide receiver position. 6'3", 200 pounds. Dan can leverage smaller defensive backs with that size speed ratio. John Reese, the all-time passing leader in Kansas history. Over 6,600 yards. He'll work from the shotgun. Jake Sharp is also in the backfield. First possession for KU, and they put it out. And the catch is made by Kerry Meyer. Let's meet the starting lineup defensively for Texas. Brought to you by KFC. And up front, how about Sergio Kendall? Yeah, he comes off the edge. He's got some speed, translates to power. We're going to play two linebackers in that nickel look. McElroy, the leading tackler on the football team. And in the secondary, Ryan Palmer last week against Baylor. A pick six, interception for touchdown, and a big stop on a fourth down in a different drive. Ryan Arakpo will see him on passing downs with nine sacks, as we mentioned in our open, which is in the top five nationally. This is Sharp. Close to a first down. Let's take a look at our Days Inc. scatter report. Well, first thing they have to do, Dan, is bounce back. A disappointing win, uh, loss last week against Nebraska. Senior day can't dwell on the disappointment. Unpredictability. You're going to have to mix it up. Be contrarian. Gadget gimmick plays, some curveball plays. Protection. 
Young Texas defensive backs are vulnerable if you can protect Reesing and Colt McCoy. You gotta pressure him because you got an inexperienced defensive backs in your secondary if you're Kansas. Reesing switching up the play, a little option, he'll pitch it to the right side. And this is Sharp stays in bounds and then knocked out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And on the stop was Eddie Jones. And Dan, you know, uh, uh, the win is a factor. They threw the ball on first down to Meyer. They've run it since. Right now, they're working into the win. Texas uh, kicked off with the win at their back. Let's see if Kansas can matriculate the ball down the field besides short intermediate stuff into this win. Second down and five for the Jayhawks. They have produced at least 400 yards of offense in eight of ten games this year. It's tipped up front. And it brings up a third down at five for Kansas. Sergio Kendall, the junior linebacker out of Dallas, Texas, got a hand on it. Yeah, Sergio Kendall has got real explosion in his hips. Ian Miller running a little stunt. Sergio Kendall is the penetrator. He got inside. Brody Miller was looping around the outside. When he got inside of the deep offensive tackle, got his hands up and got that big left mucker on the football. Todd Reesing, 18 and 5 as a starter. He owns 32 school records here at KU. We mentioned he is from Austin, Texas, one that got away from the Longhorns. Reesing finds the open man, Desmond Briscoe. Boy, has he been a weapon, Dave, as of late. First down for Kansas. Uh, he, he really has. He's really starting to understand coverages. And look at him get the inside release here. Beasley lets him get inside, runs a slant, and it's a courageous route because he knows Giddings is going to be right there to put the lick on him. Secures the football. Briscoe is a big-time explosive player on the edge. You see he's closing in on a thousand yards receiving. Another first down for Kansas. Reesing finds the open man again as he swings it to the wide side. And it looked like Kerry Meyer may have pulled up. That would be a huge loss for Kansas, their leading receiver. As Meyer made the catch, he's caught at least three passes in every game this year. Let's take a look at the very end of the play. Yeah, Jonathan Wilson making the block, and you can see Kerry Meyer just kind of slowing up. And he kind of hops on that right foot, gets his left foot up off the ground as quickly as he can. And he seems to be okay. He's being checked on the Kansas sideline right now, kind of walking it off a little bit. Second down and seven. Kerry Meyer, by the way, is also the backup quarterback to Reese as well as being the leading receiver. Recent play action. Good protection, now steps up. He is elusive, but brought down. In on the stop again, Sergio Kendall. Sergio Kendall. He is, he's a linebacker, but now against the nickel defense, he plays the rush defensive end. Look at the spin move that he has, and he stays after it. Not a quarterback sack, because Reesing did get back past the line of scrimmage. But I'll tell you, he's got explosive power that converts to speed, does Sergio Kendall. Sharp, the junior in the backfield, along with another junior, Angus Quigley. He's a young man from Texas, for Kansas, in their backfield, along with Reesing. Should be an author. <laughs> Third down and nine after the loss of two. Good protection again. A recent misfires. Let's check in with the Jim Knox and an update on Kerry Meyer. There's no question. It's hard to stretch out when you're tightly wound in your muscle groups like the skilled players are in this cold weather. Tougher to stretch them out. Big factor. They're like thoroughbreds. They have to feel perfect to be able to run that race. Jordan Shipley is back to receive for the Longhorns. Booted away by Ross. Takes a Texas bounce and will stay right here as they down it at the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at the KFC starting lineup for the Texas Longhorns. And they've got a little shift up front, don't they, Dave? They sure do, Dan. they got a true freshman at the center position, David Snow, due to injury. Jordan Shipley is basically the soul, heart and soul of the offense with Colt McCoy. All-time passing leaders, number one on that list. We'll see him today. Colt McCoy, only a junior for Texas. The head of Major Applewhite is on the coaching staff and James Brown as well. He is tremendous. Completing 78% of his passes this year. I mean, think about that. 78%. Crazy. McCoy. It's the man on the backfield. That's Fozzie Whitaker. 
We talked to Mac Brown about Colt McCoy and the difference this year, and he said the game has just slowed down for him. Yeah, and, and really, it, it's all off-season, Dan. I mean, it's all about the commitment that he made in the off-season. Hit the weight room, put on about 10 or 15 good pounds, and he went over every single play with Greg Davis, why they made the call, what the expectation was. He's like a coach in the field right now. He can anticipate calls that Greg Davis is going to make. And what's interesting about him, too, is that not only is he a great passer, he is Texas's leading rusher, which right. may surprise a lot of folks. In on the staff was Jake Leptad, a sophomore defensive end. Their leading sack man out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We'll highlight him on our KFC lineup. Yeah, he's a good edge guy. I mean, he can pressure the quarterback. James Holt, he'll put his hand down. He'll play linebacker. Also put his hand in the dirt and pressure off the edge. Daryl Stuckey may be the best football player on the defense. He'll make a lot of plays in the secondary. You've got to keep, keep your head on the still for him. McCoy, third down, plenty of time, fires. Look like early no contact. Now yeah. They get the lay flag as George Shipley was the intended receiver. Strozier, Philip Strozier, whistled for the flag along with Damon Patterson, who was in. Yeah, and I, I think it's a good call. His arrival was way premature to the arrival of the football. That's defense, number 28, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So that's Damon Patterson, the freshman, and the defensive backfield of KU has been much maligned as of late. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and if they can protect Colt McCoy like they have done here, they are going to get the ball down the field. And Patterson does go through Shipley to make a play on the football. And his contact with Shipley is definitely early. And therefore, the flag is thrown. 50 penalties against Kansas, second fewest in the Big 12 this year. They pick up the first down following that penalty. Colt McCoy rolling to his left, wide open near that sideline, the Texas sideline. Is that was uh, Juan Cosby. And let's uh, check in now with our days in scout report. Well, they're going to match the early energy. There's excitement, enthusiasm, senior day, Kansas. Texas has to match that. Be efficient in the running game. Not a big number, any, no magic number, but enough where the run fake and play action has an effect. And they have to get Todd Reesing out of rhythm. They can't allow him to get comfortable. They have to contain him, get him out of rhythm. Don't let him get outside the edge. Second and one. And they'll pick up the first down. That was Whitaker. Caleb Blakesley in on the stop, the junior out of Ottawa, Kansas, for the Jayhawks. You know, this here's looking uh, at the rushing game of the Longhorns game the last five games. Right here, 80 yards rushing in their loss to Texas Tech. 47 of those 80 yards came on the last drive of the game. But here, from Missouri, they dominated. They bounced back against Baylor. When they rushed the ball for 150 yards or more, this is a tough offense to deal with when they're that balanced. They play. Play action. Steps up over the middle. And another first down for the Longhorns. Strozier in on the stop the catch by Jordan Shipley. McCoy and Shipley are roommates. Those two know each other so well. Yeah, it goes back to, to when they were kids, Sandlot football. Their dads were college roommates and teammates at Alvaline Christian. So they've known each other their entire lives. And it really is like a sixth sense. It's almost mental telepathy when those two are playing pitch and catch. Shipley, as they run an option now, is their leading receiver. And Kansas able to string it out. Longhorns will lose a few yards. It's Mike Rivera, third on the team with his 60-bit tackle. And also in on the stop was Mortensen. Yeah, and Stuckey's around the area, too. And Stuckey will stick you. There's no question about that. And when, you, and when you look at Rivera, look down at his legs. He's got a knee brace on. And that knee brace is indicative of the problems that he's had. He's, look, at, look at that right knee. He's got it braced up a little bit. He's been playing through a lot of pain, a lot of problems. He's been limited physically, but he's a competitor and has been involved every snap this year. One of the co-captains for the Jayhawks. Second and 12, McCoy. Over the middle again. Malcolm Williams this time, the freshman out of Garland, Texas. Oh, you're talking about a big freshman. Malcolm Williams, 6'3", almost 220 pounds, ran a 10 400 meters in high school. I mean, this guy has got, his future is burning brightly. And I, he's making himself available as a big target. Everybody's getting nice inside releases on the quarterbacks and, and presenting themselves for their quarterbacks on those tight slants. McGee is in the backfield. The second leading rusher behind McCoy. 
First and ten with the ball on the 15. McCoy looking towards the end zone and incomplete. No late flag call on that play. Strozier that time was in on the coverage. Shipley can't believe it. Mac Brown and the Texas coaches can't believe it either. He thought that there was early involvement in coverage. A double move, little double move on the outside. Shipley feels like he got interfered with early before the arrival of the football again by Philip Strozier. And Mac Brown can't believe it. He's saying it's unbelievable that that call was not made. It was a catchable pass for Shipley, but he felt like Philip Strozier interfered with his ability to go up and get that football. McGee again in the backfield with McCoy, second down and 10. And it's McGee up the middle to the five. Touchdown, Texas. Vondrell McGee. His eighth touchdown of the season. And you know what, Dan? Sometimes as a receiver, it's what you do without the football in your hands. And Jordan Shipley had an unbelievable downfield block that let McGee finalize the play. You know, you run routes, you catch the football, all that's good and all that's pretty. Sometimes you have to get your nose a little bloody and get a little dirty blocking people. Shipley showed himself a complete receiver with that downfield block. Ryan Bailey on to attempt the extra points. And just like that, first drive for Texas. Vondrell McGee, the 5'10", 200-pound sophomore out of Longview, Texas. Number three, Longhorns on top after their first drive. 7-0, Texas. Number three in the land with 7.59 to go. The American Forces Network broadcasting to the United States Armed Forces serving in 177 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. We welcome you and thank you for what you do for us. Absolutely. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for making the United States of America the best country in the world. Justin Tucker will kick it away. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, watch the big boys up front get the job done. They do well. Watch Jordan Shipley, number eight, right up top here. He's going to get the block on Strozier, the safety. Boom. Locks him up. He's an honorary hog right there. He has been inducted into the offensive line camp of Hogden. 7 nothing Texas. The kick with the wind behind them. And now they'll just take a knee and take it. First and 10 on the 20. Time for a game break. Let's go to Michael Eames. They have a hangover. Interesting to see. Racing swings it out to Jake Sharp. And quickly, Texas all over. A gain of short gain of two on the play. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Dan, we talked. They're shipped over to Notre Dame when they take on Syracuse. So nice, warm, and cozy. But the big guys, hey, they don't even need to sit on the bench. Lavin, you would love it down here. Tell me, Darcy, you forget those benches. I, what, 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 a, what a business that is. Leasing heated benches. You're going to love it. <laughs> the catch made by uh, the sophomore Jonathan Wilson out of Houston, Texas, brings up a third down. Nine plays, 71 yards. It only took just over three and a half minutes for this Texas offense. And they were aided, of course, by that late flag. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. The inter but I think it was warranted. I think there was pass interference there. And, and actually, they felt like there was pass interference in the end zone with Strozier on Shipley that wasn't called, but they still finished with the touchdown run by the beat. Third and three for Kansas. Racing play action with time over the middle. Uh -oh. Triple coverage deflected, and it brings up a fourth down. Trying to go for Briscoe. What did he draw a crowd, didn't he? I mean, Briscoe, he, he was like, honey, attracted bees right here. You know, they're. Beasley's running with them, and watch everybody else break to the football. I mean, <laughs> Briscoe is going to have a bunch of bodies. It's going to be me and my shadow, and Briscoe's going to have multiple shadows out there. The Longhorns are very aware of what Briscoe can do from a big play standpoint. Alonzo Rojas out of Miami, Florida. There's Jordan Shipley. He wears number eight for the Longhorns. Back to receive, standing on his own 36-yard line. Second punt for Kansas today. It's a low liner again into the wind. 
Takes a KU bounce, though, inside that 30-yard line, all the way down and rolling and rolling and rolling to the 23. And that low trajectory is intentional because of that wind. You don't want to get it up and have it boom around. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC. Texas back on offense when we come back. Texas has not lost to Kansas since 1938. They lead 7-0. Let's take a look at the BCS standings presented by American Airlines. Alabama still number one. And look at the uh, look at the Big 12 involved there. Texas Tech, Texas, Oklahoma. Three of the top five in the BCS still members of the Big 12 Conference. Not only the Big 12, the Big 12 South. Is there a better division in all college football? I don't think so. Red Covisto Field at Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Senior day, there's a look at Matt Brown. He was telling us earlier this week that his team went through the toughest stretch of games that they have ever played. McCoy, who was four or five on that first series, hit hard. The ball was loose, but it was late, and he picks up about four on that play. Cole McCoy, the leading rusher for the Longhorns. Averaging almost four and a half yards a carry. Danny's rushed for seven touchdowns. Quick decision to tuck it and run. And Brorson is, it hits him. He gets, he's the meat of the sandwich. You never want to be the meat of the sandwich. I mean, Rivera and, 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 and Laptat, I should say, get, get the big hit on him. Second and five. McCoy just swings it out to Jordan Shipley. He gets a block close to a first down. He'll be just shy. Well, we didn't see Kerry Meyer on that last drive for KU. What's the deal, Jim Knox? I think he's better, a lot better now, Dan. He just hopped off the uh, stationary bicycle. That left hamstring continues to tighten up on him. And right now it appears to be loose. So I think, guys, he's going to give it a go this next offensive series. And when he caught the football, he was just a little bit out of balance. And in this cold weather, sometimes those muscles really tighten up. And that left hamstring yanked on one a little bit. They did get the first down, first and ten. McCoy over the middle. Connects again with Jordan Shipley. That's his favorite target. You know, you look at these two guys, both their dads, high school football coaches, both their dads, roommates, teammates at Albaline Christian. So these guys were born and bred to play football, and they do it well. Pitch and catch. If you know, the receiver quarterback is built on trust and confidence, these two totally trust each other and have absolute confidence in each other. Vondra McGee in the backfield. He'll get the call on the handoff. Ball oh, is loose, but a whistle. They're going to whistle it down before it got away from McGee. Looks like he's short of the marker, though. It's going to be third and short. Let's watch and listen. What did Mark Mangino see in here down there? Clearly, it looked like he was down. No doubt, Dan. No doubt. And to remember, in college football, every single play is being reviewed by the replay officials. And it looks like they're going to take a, another look at this one, a longer look, to make sure that it was after the play was dead. Isn't that amazing stat we just showed the folks? Is that the running backs of Texas have yet to fumble the football this year. Haven't lost the, the play fumble. is under further right. review. They, they have not lost the fumble in, in all those carries. Some have, some have been, they've lost, you know, been on the ground, but they have not lost possession of a, of a, of a fumble this year. Amazing at the running back spot. He's definitely down. It looked like. I mean, his left knee is down. The right ball's, there. His, his left knee is, is totally down. The ball's not out yet. It's not out yet. And now, after his whole body's after basically review, down, the ruling on the field ball is comes confirmed. Out. The runner was down. Dave, we were talking about that tough stretch that Texas went through. Number one, Oklahoma. Number 11, Missouri. Number seven, Oklahoma State. Then the heartbreaker to Texas Tech. First team to defeat three AP top 11 opponents in three consecutive weeks since 1983. Auburn the last to do it. It was interesting. Mac Brown told us that then they went back into pads. This is why change things up. Right. Well, they, they ran that gauntlet and they took the team out of pads for the Texas Tech game. Lost the game. Didn't go very well. Put them right back into pads for the week of practice against Baylor. Balls out. Balls out. Who's got it? Kansas. Kansas has had it. James Holtz. It popped over the line of scrimmage. The exchange, the center quarterback exchange. The ball pops straight up through Colt McCoy's hands. And remember, we have a new starting center, freshman center, Snow, and the center quarterback exchange on the third and short. 
Now did Snow snap the ball? Did he get it up well enough? I mean, it split Colt McCoy's hands, and it bounced over the line of scrimmage, and Holt falls right on top of it. Big, big takeaway for the Jayhawks. Short field to negotiate, Dan. So Reesing and the Jayhawks take over on the 46 of Texas. Sharp is leveled by Eddie one, Jones. This first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Now, now remember the, the the starting center that is, that has played just about the the entire season at that position. Chris Hall sustained a knee injury Wednesday of practice. They think he's going to be back, but not for today's game for Texas. Racing catch made first down. Desmond Briscoe, the sophomore. Briscoe has become the go-to guy, and for good reason. Does a nice job. Look at him find the soft spot in the zone, and that's where he's advanced so much, Dan. Understanding uh, zone coverage is where help is coming from. Finding holes and settling into them. Briscoe with six catches over 100 yards last week against Nebraska. Kerry Meyer. Boy, they need him, Dave, and he makes the catch. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. And, you know, interesting, in earlier conversations with Mark Mangino said not the most, not just the most respected football team on his football team, maybe the most respected student on campus in Lawrence. That's heavy, heavy praise for Kerry Meyer. Very unselfish football player, obviously. Second down and five. Kansas starting to move the football. Amazingly, Meyer only sees about 25% of the reps at wide receiver in practice during the week because he's the backup quarterback. Right. Reese looking for him. The blitz was there. He picks it up. Briscoe, very close to that first down marker. Meyer struggling. Meyer's trying to hop, little hopscotch back to the huddle. He's struggling a little bit. That left hamstring still very, very tight. He's checking out of the football game and checking in. Is, is Beery, a big true freshman tight end that they're going to go big body with on his third and short. 31. Racing with that hard count trying to get him to jump. Little pitch to Sharp. They string it out short of the first down. Eddie Jones. The defensive end, only a sophomore out of Kilgore, Texas. I'll tell you what, this young man, 6'3", 255 pounds, watch him in space. Number 32 right here. Separate from the block and in space make a tackle on a very, very quick-footed sharp. That's an outstanding defensive effort by Eddie Jones, understanding leverage and, and making sure that he did not let Sharp get outside. They lost a yard. It's fourth and two. Don't line up offside up there. Make sure you're behind the line of scrimmage. Find the football. Meyer hobbling in motion, racing, trying to make something happen. Avoids pressure. Short. Turnover on downs. Back to Texas. And that's a that's a great way to describe it because when you lose the ball on downs, it's equivalent to a turnover. It's like fumbling at the line of scrimmage. Four down stop. It almost even even though it doesn't go down as a turnover, it's the same effect. Both football teams have lost it. You want every possession to end on a kick. Two possessions in a row did not. 7-0, Texas. Big 12 College Football Saturday. Texas leads it 7 to nothing. Later today, our College Football Saturday triple header presented. You get Macklin in space, you're in trouble. Colt McCoy. Flea flicker. flea flicker here. Looking down the sideline. Almost intercepted. Stucky, good coverage, looking for Quan Cosby. He didn't bite on it, made a nice play. Yeah, and, and, and that's now that's a, a safety and a running or on a wide receiver, and usually that matchup's going to favor the offensive football team. And Colt McCoy pays the price. Rivera gets a lick on him after he delivers the football in that flea flicker, but usually wide receiver on safety is a matchup that you like. Because of the pressure, Colt McCoy underthrew the football a little bit and Stucky was able to recover on it. Dave Lapham, Dan McLaughlin, Jim Knox with you here in Lawrence, Kansas. 
McCoy swings it to the left side as the catch is made by Brandon Collins. Sophomore from Texas. Fourth on the team with his 21st reception on the year. Right, let's take a look. Dante Culpepper has the record for single season, 73.6%. Got a couple of guys that are, are, are on pace to break that record. Chase Daniel and Colt McCoy. When you're looking at you know, three out of every four passes that you throw or four out of every five that you throw being completed at this stage of the season is truly remarkable. Well, this is a young man that wears number three in that backfield. There you see the numbers for McCoy. This is a young man that you are like. Obanaya can play. I'll tell you what, he can give you a lot. And Obanaya gets it right on cue and picks up the first down for Texas. And, and I'll tell you, Obanaya against Colorado had a couple of big plays that bailed him out up there. And, and he, he did his job, came in, caught the ball out of the backfield, and, and, and checks right out. The Texas Longhorns, as you would imagine, have many, many weapons, a myriad of ways that you can attack a defense with all the weapons that they have available to them. Amazingly, Texas has had 43 scoring drives of at least 60 yards. They average 43 points a game and nearly 500 yards of total offense. Fozzie Whitaker back in the backfield now for Texas. And a stop up front for Kansas. Well, that was just nice gap control responsibility. Good team defense by the Jayhawks right there. A sold out Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Senior day. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, Texas 7, Kansas nothing. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by KFC. <laughs> Big 12 College Football Saturday in Lawrence, Kansas. Take a look at the KFC game summary. 7-0, number three in the country. The Longhorns with the lead. Colt McCoy, 8 of 10. McGee, the 14-yard touchdown run. Todd Reese, 8 of 12 on the other sideline. Total yards, Texas with 91 on a very windy, cool afternoon here in Lawrence, Kansas. Both quarterbacks have been short to intermediate range passes, Dan, because of the wind and the weather. McCoy wants to throw again with a shovel pass this time. Good job by Kansas up front defensively. That is Whitaker with the shovel pass and Mike Rivera with his third tackle so far this afternoon. And, and that's a big play on second down for Kansas. Now it becomes third and long. Texas is off schedule. Third and 11 is not where you want to be, even when you have a Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback, because now you can bring in some of your pressure packages. Clint Bowen can bring in some special guys and pressure packages. And one of the things that he does, he puts number 12, James Holt, down the rush quarterback. Obanaya is also in the backfield. McCoy steps up in the pocket. There he out of it and brought down. James Holt. Second on the team with 80 tackles. That's his sixth sack of the season. Well, he's the specialty guy. I mean, he'll play linebacker. They'll put his hand in the dirt and have him rush the quarterback. And there he is on the on the down below on the edge. And I'll tell you, he gets off the line of scrimmage very well. Yulatoski gets his shoulder pads turned to the sideline, and he gives him a soft edge. And 12 on 12, and number 12 in the blue jersey, Holt, just jolted Holt. Holt, Jolt, Holt, how about that? There you go, Damon Patterson back to receive for Kansas, standing on his own 32. They'll angle it to the sideline. Shank. And he shanked it his right. So again, the Jayhawks will have good field position. The weather playing a factor today. Also a sold-out crowd. KU back on offense when we return. Lawrence, Kansas. Big 12, college football Saturday, a good one. Number three, Texas. They lead it 7-0 over KU on senior day. Todd Racing, the first six games, 5-1. and one. The last four, though, Dave, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Well, he's had Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Texas, pretty good defenses. That will well, make a difference. Now flinch. Flag. Right guard flinched on that one. That's going to cost Both you. Both Chet Hartley. Offense, number 59, five-yard penalty, still first down. Or it's Capra. I'm sorry, it's Capra in there instead of Hartley. Yeah, the Cap sophomore from Kansas City. Yeah, Capra is uh, he's a swing guard. He can play right and left guard for you. And that time he flinched, though. It's one thing, no matter where you line it up, you want to stay in that three-point stance, and don't be flinching up there. The punt for Texas was 11 yards. So Kansas gets good field position here. 
Todd Reesing this afternoon, 8 of 12, 45 yards. His longest connection, 12. And the pickup there, back into Texas territory. That's Tim Beery, the freshman tight end out of Omaha, Nebraska. And again, a true freshman, and, and he's, he's pretty salty. He does a nice job. Did a good job of finding the soft spot in the zone right there, settled in, and presented himself as a big old target for Todd Reese to deliver the ski right. A pickup of nine. You see the current weather conditions, very cold, windy, trying to set up a little screen out of over the middle. And the fans want a flag, but they don't get it. Looking for Dexton Fields, third and six, upcoming. Yeah, they wanted a flag on Earl Thomas. They thought that Earl Thomas was early in his arrival on Fields, and was he? Fields, there's the football, there's the little, it's, it's close, it's tight, and a lot of times when you go over the back and through the guy, a flag will be thrown, but no flag on that one. A big third down for Kansas. Remember the last time Kansas had a short field after the box center quarterback exchange, Texas held them on downs. Four downs, almost like a turnover getting them back. What will Kansas do on this one? Quigley in the backfield for the Jayhawks. Into help protection, racing over the middle. Going to be very close to that first down marker. That's Desmond Briscoe. He's been the favorite target today with a banged up Kerry Meyer. You already hear the fans saying, go for it. Yeah, and, and the, the fans are imploring Mark Mangino to go for the short little shallow cross. Briscoe does a good job. Barry kind of clears it out. Little crossing pattern. Sometimes defenders get picked off. That time they did a good job of sorting it out. But still the completion made. Kansas is going. They are 5 for 10. Fourth down conversions this year. Remember, they pitched it. Don't be offside. Going for the last time on fourth down. Reesing. Looking for anybody to be open. And again, another turnover on downs. They cannot convert. I'll tell you, Gideon. Yeah, the pressure by Gideon was the key to the key to the play. I mean, he did not give Reesing any time to get the, his eyes downfield to throw the ball accurately. So the second time they have done that this afternoon, Reese looking for anybody, somebody, give him some help. No one's open. Turnover. Seven nothing, Texas. It is fifty thousand here today, and they've averaged over fifty all season long. Well, eight of the top eleven attended games in Kansas history are under the Mark Mangino era. So the, foot, the, the fans are responding to this football team under Coach Mangino. Whitaker in the backfield. McCoy wants to throw over the middle. The catch is made. Very close to a first down. For a game break, let's go to Michael Eaves. All right, let's go to the... On second down, Texas may have lost a yard or two in that play as Richard Johnson, big man up front out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Also, Blakesley was there for Kansas, so the Jayhawks now have forced a third down in five for the Longhorns. Yeah, Caleb Blakesley was unceremoniously slung Colt McCoy to the turf. Colt McCoy, there's his rushing numbers. Again, the best on the club. He is the leading rusher as well as a dynamic passer of the football. Obanaya again in on third down in the backfield. He'll go out to the flat. They wanted to go there. Now over the middle. Very close to a first down. Jordan Shipley. Oh, didn't get a great spot. It's going to be close. That's his fourth catch in the afternoon to lead all receivers. by number 16, Chris Harris. And again, when feeling a little pressure, his security blanket, Jordan Shipley. They're on the little bubble screen. They do a pretty good job of getting some blockers out front. But Kansas makes a nice defensive reaction. I mean, look at it. A lot of guys running to the football right there. It could have gone for big yards, but Kansas was pretty darn effective in their recovery. So Texas gets the first down. First and 10 with the ball on the 48. McCoy out of the shotgun. Calls his own play up the middle. Still on his feet. And that's one of those plays that Mac Brown talked about. Slide. Don't take that extra hit for a free credit report.com sideline report. Let's join Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Dan, directly behind me, the, the Longhorn defense huddled around Will, Juss, Will Muschamp, the defense coordinator. I tell you what, guys, they need a camera on him. He's just like 
chest bumping everybody, high fiving everybody. Two fourth down stops by this Texas defense. You got to love playing for a guy like that, guys. Get you fired up. Well, huh? the must champ, his defense is allowed the fewest points in the Big 12. That's the object of the game. Keep off the scoreboard. And again, this is a, a defense that's allowed of Texas only 207 points this year. Watch the fourth down play here. Watch Blake Gideon. He's going to time his, his safety blitz. You have to have good press coverage on the edge. Gideon's the one that forces Reese to throw it early. Great call by Will, Will Muschamp. Great execution. Will Muschamp says, yeah, I dialed it up, baby. And you guys delivered. Matt Brown likes it. Muschamp likes it. Great job by Gideon. And great press coverage on the edge. Gideon only a freshman. How good is he going to be before it's all said and done? Very poised. Third and three. Oh, but now in and out of his hand. So... Matt Brown now, a decision coming up on fourth down. Mike Rivera in on the coverage for the Jayhawks. And look at that matchup that you just described, Dan. Obanaya, a very fast running back on Rivera, a linebacker slash defensive end. He'll put his hand down and rush some, too. That is a matchup that favors the offense. Rivera said, no, not this time. I'm going to provide great coverage. Good throw by McCoy. Great coverage by Rivera, though. Nice job. Justin Tucker. Standing on his own, 43 will punt it away. Damon Patterson standing on his 10. Back deep to receive. They will angle it, low kick. Of course, it is such a windy day. And they will mark that out at the 12-yard line. Good job by Tucker. KU back on offense when we come back. Michael DeMarco, thank you. Dave Lapham alongside Jim Knox downstairs. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC, number three in the land. The Texas Longhorns on the road. They lead it by seven against Kansas. Deep in their own territory for Todd Reesing. It's first and ten for the Jayhawks. Trying to get just a little breathing room. That's Angus Quigley, the junior out of Texas with the carry. This first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. A pickup of four on the play, second and six. Racing again out of the shotgun. Good protection. He'll swing it to the sideline, third down. Looking for Angus Quigley again. You know, uh, Angus Quigley is in the football game. That means Jake Sharp isn't. And the last carry that Jake Sharp had looked like he got up a little slowly. Looked like his, uh, he was having some problems in his ribcage area, but they can't lose him. I mean, look what he's done in conference play, averaging over 108 yards per game rushing in the Big 12. Well, think of him being out and also Meyer leaping Hampton, around. Yeah, yeah. It's been Kerry Meyer. Yeah. He's in the slot here. Firing for a first down and connecting Jonathan Wilson, the sophomore, with the catch. You know, Dave, what's amazing, and, and Wilson is out of Houston, Texas. I was talking with Art Riles earlier this year. He said there'll be 300-plus kids that will play Division One football out of the state of Texas next year. Well, that's amazing. Guy, yeah, the guy that threw it to him and the guy that caught it right there are both Texas guys in that play. You got it. Again, wide open over the middle. Another big pickup for Kansas. Stay on your feet. Jonathan Wilson, if he stays on his feet, he's got a bunch of yards. Yeah, I think he really he, he felt like he had to kind of protect himself. He really didn't. There was nobody within three or four yards of him. If he stays on his feet, he's got yards after catch. A little yakety yak yak, but he assumes the fetal position too early. Second down and two. Kansas starting to move. Drive that began on their own 12. They'll pitch it to the right side. Oh, look at that. Lowering his shoulder. Oh, picking up the first down was quickly. Coaches are saying he was juggling the football. Texas has it, but the officials are saying, no, he was down. Ball carried by number 22, Angus Woodley. Mac, Mac Brown saying he quickly did not have possession of that football. Will Muschamp making the next call. All right, Gideon makes the big hit. When's the ball out? Oh, the ball's out before he hits the ground. He has not hit the ground. He's got his left hand down to balance himself, not the elbow, though. They're taking another look at it. The replay official, remember, every in college football, every play is reviewed. It comes from the top down, unless coaches challenge it. Mac may have challenged it because he has timeouts remaining. And Mac Brown, I, they had a great look at it. It was right in front of their bench, and I think Mac Brown says, look, you got to take another look at this one. Quickly balanced himself with the one arm. Did not have an elbow or a knee down. 
the play is under further review. There is no challenge by Texas. No challenge. They did it on their own. I think Mack was going to call the timeout, but they blew the whistle to stop the play anyway because, as we said, every single play is reviewed by the replay officials. They want to take a closer look. Now, where knees aren't down, he's, he's, he's lunging over bodies. Right arm to support, ball's out. They, and that's a fumble. He has not hit the ground with any body part. The hand does not count. You can balance yourself with your hand, get upright, and continue to run. If you have the elbow down or the knee down, you're down, but not the hand. That's a fumble. It is a fumble. It is. And Texas came up with the football, so it could be Longhorn football with 37 yards to negotiate, a short field. Boy, how good is Mac Brown at Texas in 11 seasons? UT 27 and 7 in the month of November, that crucial month, and at least 10 wins in each of the last seven seasons. Yeah, he, he has been just phenomenal. Uh, in the last 11 years, 112 wins, more than anybody. In the la he averaged 10 wins a year for 11 years. I mean, 10 wins is the minimum standard now at Texas. They want to win the B uh, win the Big 12 South win the Big 12 championship, get into the BCS championship game. That's some of their goals. Ten wins now has become, okay, that's minimum standard, that's Texas football. Will Muschamp and Matt Brown celebrating that one. That's the right call. Yep. After further review, the ruling is fumble. Texas recovered. First down, Texas on the 38-yard line. And that's the proper call. There was not an elbow down, no knee down. Quigley is, is bad, basically balancing himself with the hand. Now the legs, watch the legs. They're, they haven't hit the ground. They're going over bodies. That's just balancing. The ball is out before his left elbow and left forearm hits the ground. Good job by the replay officials. And Texas was all over on that sideline. Their reaction was spontaneous. It's a heck of a job by Gideon with the strip. As Quigley lowered his shoulder, the freshman was able to get that arm in there and strip it away. Texas has it now. First and ten. Gideon made the big fourth down play there on the safety blitz. That's that right. Will Muschamp dialed up, and then he made that play. Blake Gideon, remember, had the unfortunate occurrence in, in Texas Tech and not making the interception on the floating ball at the end of the game. He has shaken all that off. He's playing today. Ball on the 38. McCoy, plenty of time, dumps it off over the middle, and a short pickup to Fozzie Whitaker. So Whitaker gets the start this afternoon, and this is a Texas offense, led by their offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, also on that sideline, Major Applewhite, the former quarterback at UT. Look at everybody from Texas look to the sideline. Everybody on the roster looking to the sideline. Major Applewhite, no, that's not Disco. He's signaling play. <laughs> and he's telling them everything. He's telling them formation. He's telling them play. Telling them snap count. We're all on the same page. Last year, he was in Alabama with Nick Saban. And here we go again. Another third down upcoming for Texas. Whitaker, the ball carrier again. Okay, Dan, let's, let's, Major Applewhite now is, is, now he's in communication with Greg Davis. Greg Davis and Major Applewhite, you can see he's in the headset. Now he's got the call from Greg Davis and he's signaling it in. Everybody from Texas is looking over at Major Applewhite. So everybody's going to get on the same page. That man right there, Greg Davis, made the call that Major Applewhite is signaling in for the Longhorns. A big, big third and six right here. Crowd on their feet here in Lawrence. McCoy deflected, incomplete. Looking for Kirkendall. But Justin Thornton, a former safety, Justin Thornton made the deflection. He's now playing corner. The ball thrown a little bit behind. If he leads him a little bit more now, he's worried about Rivera, but the ball thrown behind just enough for Justin Thornton to make the play. Now, Texas' defense held Kansas twice, four down on a short field. Texas' offense going for a short field, fourth down against Kansas' defense. Who will win this one? Big snap right here. Major Applewhite has signaled in for Blake Davis. This place is electric. Play clock at one. Time out. Took a while to make that decision, exactly what they wanted to do on the fourth down. It'll be fourth and six when we come back on Big 12 College Football Saturday. Arguably the biggest play in the game right here thus far. Fourth down and six for the Longhorns. Obanaya in the backfield with McCoy. 
And again, the folks here at Memorial Stadium on their feet. McCoy. A blitz. He got drilled and it's picked, picked off. off. Oh. Interception for Kansas. Damon Patterson. It's an incomplete pass, but it, it, that even helps Kansas a little more. They pick up more yards. They ruled they didn't have possession. Incomplete to Clint Bowen. He brings five. He brings the blitz. And Mortensen gets home and delivers the hit. And, and, and as a result, Colt McCoy has to throw the ball early. The ball is trapped. No interception. Great play, though. No, no completion made on fourth down. Tremendous effort by Damon Patterson, who was playing wide receiver earlier this year. Amazing. Play action. Leasing with some time. Now tucks it. Looking for a block to his left side, and he will slide. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That is an amazing story, though. Damon Patterson, who just made that deflection on that play for Kansas defensively. Akeem Tlaib, of course, we remember him, the outstanding defender for Kansas. Well, he started at wide receiver against Kansas State last year. Well, Patterson now, a two-way starter. He's played on both sides of the ball. Yeah, but he's, he's pretty all cornerback now because he's starting at that cornerback position, and they were struggling there. They moved the safety to corner, and they moved the wide receiver to corner. Justin Thornton was playing safety earlier in the year, starting in corner. There it is again. Good read. Desmond Briscoe with the catch, but a flag on the play. This is where this, this official might have seen some holding at the left tackle position. Bobino is in in the thick of things. Well, Offense chop. number three. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. What you Jack have is Crawford. Crawford, Crawford, the running back, is helping the, uh, the, the tackle, and he, and he watched the illegal chop right here. Watch the chop block occur. Here, here he is. As it, as the, ta the tackle's not quite engaged, but he has an illegal chop block. Crawford does. 15-yard penalty, a high-low, low-high combination block. I think that's dicey because he was hit and let go, and Crawford made the block when there was no engagement there. I think that's stretching the rule further than it, it should be intended to be stretched. I thought Crawford made a good play there. The tight end uh, just he jammed the defense men and let him go. And then Crawford made the chop block. I think Kansas uh, got the raw, raw end of that one. Second and 25, racing, looking deep. And the catch made near the first down marker, Desmond Briscoe again. Oh, he makes it a, a convertible situation. Picks up a lot of yards right there. And now back on schedule are the Jayhawks. The protection is outstanding. Doing a pretty good job of balling Miller and melting up there. And Briscoe. Just runs great routes. Gideon makes the hit, but too late. Five catches, 50 yards for Briscoe. Four wide receivers for Reesing here in the spread offense. Pressure is there, and then he's brought down. The pressure initially by Sergio Kendall. I'll tell you what, Dave, he has been all over the place and finishing off the play. Roy Miller. Boy, I'll tell you, Kendall is... He's a, he's a force off the edge, and the, and the protection broke down. Remember, Kansas has two redshirt freshmen at the tackle position. The concern was, would they be able to hold up on the edge? Redshirt freshman working against Kendall. Redshirt freshman on the backside as well. Beats that, uh, Kendall beats his, his target at the tackle position. Redshirt freshman just fights. The wind is with Alonso Rojas. Shipley spinning and brought down. Inside that 35-yard line, they'll mark it at the 33. Willie O'Quinn in on the coverage. Tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday returns. And we got a good one here. Number three in the land of the BCS. Texas on top on the road. 7 nothing. Just over four minutes to play, first half. McCoy flushed out of the pocket. He'll tuck it. The leading rusher for the Longhorns. Diving ahead and near that first down marker for Texas. You know who made a good adjustment on this was Whitaker. Whitaker throws a nice block when he realizes Colt McCoy has tucked it to run. Watch Whitaker. Watch what he does. He's going to, oh, here he goes. I'm going to pick off a block. Nice job. He got a, just enough of a piece of James Holt where Colt McCoy picked up extra yards just being aware as a football player. The view is first half points. Texas had six against Texas Tech. Oh. Oh. And a 
bang on the play. And nearly an amazing catch on that sideline by Quan Cosby, the senior from Texas. And Thornton is uh, upset and disappointed. He's going to be called for the interference. And Cosby uh, had him barely beaten. That was a great throw by That's McCoy. Defense, number 46. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Automatic. First down. Thornton's giving him cushion. And he can run with him a little bit, but you can see with the right hand, he's arm barring him, and he's like, he's, he's jostling him around before the football gets there. Gets his head turned to find the football late, but he jostled Cosby around well before the football made it to Cosby's final destination. Whitaker in the backfield. First and 10 for Texas. McCoy again wants to tuck it. He does, and he's hit. Whew. Well, we had heard that he was a little beat up, Dave, coming out of their last game against Baylor. Then prior to that, having a couple of tough games, you see some of the flurry starting to fall here in Lawrence, Kansas. You just wonder how beat up he is going into this game. Yeah, I think both these quarterbacks uh, came off of tough deals. Nebraska hit Todd Reesing a bunch. And, and not only Baylor last week, but as you said, uh, you know, Dan, it's a situation where he's been hit in that, in that gauntlet stretch of the schedule. He was knocked around a lot. A pickup of two, second down and eight. McCoy sets up a screen. They've got blockers. Nice. Big hole. 25 down to the 20 to the outside. Inside the 20 it goes. And that's Whitaker again. Boy, they set that up beautifully. And it was Thornton in on the stop for KU. Watch Charlie Tanner get the block. You know, the offensive line. It's 1,001, 1,002. Get out in space. Watch number 52 in the white jersey. He gets his block, and a couple of guys get blocked. Charlie Tanner got the kickoff block and allows Whitaker to get up the football field. Tonight. There's, there's the block by Tanner, and a nice little peel back block inside as well. Gave Whitaker a lane. McCoy again out of the pocket, diving ahead, and picks up two on the play. Cole McCoy passing today is 13 of 18, over 100 yards. Man, it's just, and, and here we are in the red zone. This is where Texas has made their money in the top 15 in the country in both areas. The only team in the nation that can say, or one of three teams in the nation that can say that. And Colt McCoy has been absolutely astounding in the red zone. I think he's only thrown one interception, something like 14 or 15 touchdowns in the red zone. We approach two minutes to play first half on senior day here in Lawrence. McCoy, plenty of protection. Watch out. He's looking end zone, throw short. And a completion, it'll be first and goal for Texas, and that's Whitaker again. And that's Whitaker, and he's working against James Holt, the linebacker, and that's a favorable matchup for the offense. James Holt doing everything he can. We saw Holt sack Colt McCoy. Look at the versatility. Holt's in coverage on Whitaker. Colt McCoy throws to the back shoulder, intentionally throws behind. Whitaker finds the football. James Holt can, and they do it all the time, throw that back shoulder where the receiver can make the adjustment much sooner than the defender can. First and goal for the Longhorns. The ball on the two. Whitaker gets the call to the outside, and he's tripped up. Joe Mortensen on the stop. The middle linebacker, big kid, 250 pounder, the senior out of California. Nice job, everybody playing their defense responsibility. Nobody over pursues. Now you separate from blocks and run. Morrison does an outstanding job of doing that, but he had other defenders in the area as well. Strozier would have made the play if Morrison did. Whitaker again in the backfield. Came in averaging six yards a carry. Second down. Goal to go. Ball on the four. They lost two in that play. Play clock is under five. Impressive drive here for Texas. McCoy wants to throw. Plenty of protection again. Nobody around. Now he's going to run a block. Goes to the outside. Touchdown, McCoy. Well, he just directed Whitaker right to making that key block for him. Colt McCoy, the traffic dog. Outstanding effort out there in space. It's his eighth rushing touchdown. And, and talk about a guy that uh, doesn't panic and shows total poise. As, as it's rush hour around him, there's pressure eventually. I mean, nice job up front to start. The pass protection's outstanding to begin with. Then some pressure. Now he says, yeah, pick him up. Turn back and get Morton. Will you, Whitaker? He does. He sashays in easily. Extra point is good, 14 to nothing, Texas. Colt McCoy, only a junior. 
in his career, 29 and 7. His completion rate in his career, 70%. The winningest quarterbacks in Texas history, the legendary Bobby Lane. Then you have Colt McCoy trying to add to his 29 here today. And number one, Mr. Young. Vince Young as he led Texas to a national title. Well, uh, you, you know, he passed an icon. There's no question. He passes up an icon, and now he's chasing uh, basically a cult hero in Vince Young. And he's one win away from doing that. And right Texas there, Colt McCoy, not only a Heisman candidate, but he is basically making himself an icon and cult hero in Texas lore, playing the quarterback position the way he's played it. He's only a junior. Dave, they say that uh, Mac Brown was telling us this week that Cole talks with Vince Young at least one time a week. Right. They, and he said that Vince Young was a guy that was always leading the drills, the seven-on-seven, seven, leading in the weight room, leading by example. And they say Cole McCoy has picked up on that and just carried that through. And, and the way he improved his body in the offseason, when your quarterback does that, everybody else says, am I doing enough? Look what Colt's doing. Tucker, short kick. Fielded at the 26. Big hit. Brought down at the 32. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim. That thrill keep the modeling crew alive. <laughs> Angus Quigley in the backfield. Reesing will roll to his right. He stumbled a bit. Kansas. Ooh, maybe a risky play here. They do have the wind at their back, but you're down by 14. Only 33 seconds left, Dave. A lot of times you'll see going against a team like Texas, take a knee and just go in at halftime and not be upset being down by 14. Yeah, and, and, and Texas to score as late as they did was a big momentum builder for them. I th I, and I think Kansas is trying to do something to combat it, but you don't want to be overly aggressive, make a mistake. Look at this little trips formation where they stack it up in a triple I with the three receivers right. If you're watching game film of their Nebraska game, they did that a couple of times to the sideline, and it's incomplete, and a big hit on that sideline by Gideon. Man, did he ever was giddy up by Gideon right there. And, and, and uh, this young man is going to get a lot of attention for a lot of years. Desmond Briscoe is big time. And Gideon, he's starting to get a little swagger back now. He's making plays, delivering hits. I mean, he had his dauber down after that Texas Tech game, but he's a coach's son, and Will Muschamp said, look, Blake, your time's going to come. You have a lot of football, a lot of snaps ahead of you. You're going to make a lot of big plays for us, and he already is. So it's third and ten. Reesing wants to set up a little screen over the middle. Oh, wow. risky pass. And making the catch somehow was Meyer. Man. Into triple coverage. And he, he took the, he paid the price for that one. That ball just floated up there. <laughs> Meyer, and that's a lot of confidence in Meyer to just float it up. And he got, he got, you talk about getting sandwiched. I mean, he's between McElroy and, and that's just a, a, a big, big hit by Jared Norton. Two linebackers sandwiched him. It, right now they're asking Meyer, do you know, are you in Austin or Lawrence? <laughs> and if he answers properly, that's a good sign. The pass was incomplete, and it brings up fourth down. You know, sometimes you get that long-distance phone call. It's ringing, and nobody ever picks up the other end, the other receiver. you got to get that ringing out of your head. It's been a tough first half for Meyer dealing with a hamstring issue. Also that pop there at the end of the half with 21 seconds to go. And Texas now can come after this punt if they wish. He, he got hit right. And sometimes you get hit under the face mask. You can take a hit to the jaw. In fact, I saw a rookie linebacker, Keith Rivers, for, for, from USC, number one pick of the Bengals. Heinz Ward broke his jaw in two places just on a peel back block, but up underneath that face mask. Pressure here with 21 seconds, a little bit on your snapper, Kill Anderson. He gets it back, though, to Rojas, and the kick is away. And it's a beauty. Shipley will step out of bounds at the 17-yard line. 14 seconds to go here in our first half. Couldn't quite right the ship and stay in bounds. He just kind of cruised out of bounds on the sideline. Directional kick executed very well right there. So both drives were kept alive by one, a flag on the scoring drive, and then the other was a pass interference. Right, and, and, and that has been the fly in the ointment for the Jayhawks a little bit. Pass defense. Nebraska 
hit that mark big time last week and Texas taking a little advantage here in the, in the first half. 14 seconds. Texas content on running the football and running out the clock of this first half. I think you go in with a two-score lead at the half, happy to be there. Paul McCoy, 14 of 19, 122 yards and a cold, windy afternoon here in Lawrence. Watch Shipley's block right there that springs McGee for the 14-yard touchdown rush. And Colt McCoy says, I'm going to get one myself. This eighth of the year, little traffic cop, Whitaker peeled back on Mortensen. Two rushing touchdowns for the Longhorn. Jim Knox standing by with Mac Brown. All right, thank you, Dan Coach. You got to be happy the way your defense is playing. A couple of big fourth down situations. You guys put up nothing on those guys. And also, right now, it's rushing yards, only three for Kansas. Well, we're, we're getting after them on defense. We're keeping pressure on a great quarterback in Todd Racing. Uh, the fourth down stops are turnovers for us, and we forced a turnover. Offensively, we started hot. When we got into the win, uh, we were inconsistent. We're not running the ball very well, but I thought Cole led us on the great drive there at the end and we get the ball to start the third quarter there we go okay appreciate the time thank you mac right now let's head to our college football saturday studios for an halftime texas leading kansas 14 to nothing let's join michael east and demarco far michael